Hi everybody, I'm doing a 30 minute session for a client. I'm gonna be sharing psychic wisdom and energy healing. If any of you are interested in exploring a session with me, come visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash abbynormalswisdomquest. All right, I wanna thank you so much. This is to the client for the opportunity to connect with you today, to help you out with these awesome goals for weight loss. I know a lot of us are really gonna get something out of this experience. There's so many people who want support with weight loss, so stick around, everybody out there in the audience, stick around because when you watch this session, what we heal in the client, we heal within you too. And we're all a part of each other, so we can reap the reward from learning, growing, healing with each other. So. I'm going to read these goals out loud. I'm going to get started. You say, for our amazing session this week, can we do it on weight loss? Let's go real deep into the subconscious and plant this baby in. Drop lots of weight and go back to 70 kilograms. Okay. I really like this. You have a, a mental aspect telling the body what to do, what you need to feel alive, to feel balanced, to be, feel satisfied with your body in this world. And your body is saying something else for some reason. You're not syncing up with one another. So I like how you're talking about going deep into the subconscious to plant this baby in because we need to balance the communication between your mind and your body. <laughs> what do you think we're going to run into here? This is going to be really interesting. Okay. You want to drop weight, go back to 70 kilograms. I mean, you have a specific goal in mind. Going deep into the subconscious to plant this baby in. I, I know what you're talking about. It's like this should just be. It should just exist. My body should continue to maintain maybe a youthful um, behavior with metabolism. Let's remind my body of what it can do and what it's done before and then it just needs to do it. <laughs> All right, let's see what we can accomplish today. The goal is awesome metabolism immediately. And you and the body, your mind and body are working together seamlessly as one. And you're ready to have this experience at 70 kilograms and that's it, period. There's nothing in the way, there's nothing in between. Okay. All right, here we go. I don't really know how to describe the beginning of this. There's weird blubbery sounds. There's the sound of whales underwater communicating <laughs> with sonar. Like there's a, what do they communicate in their ways. And I just, I just see um, a radar and I, it's, what, it's called sonar, right? <laughs> like I, um, I see we're picking up on sounds of the whales and then I hear blubbery noises as well. There's emotions here. You don't want to be a physical form. You want to be an energy form. You want to be lighter because it reminds you of your spirit self. You want to be light in your human body as well. And you're crying. There's no joke here. Like you could call someone overweight a whale, but the, the actual the whales are calling to help you. They're calling for you and they want to help you. The dolphins, the whales, it seems like these intelligent water creatures love you very much so. You're turning your back on them.
This is really difficult. I see a man that looks like a hamburger. And we're not talking about like a one pound patty. We're, ta <laughs> we're talking about like the mega burger, okay? And he's a mega burger man. He doesn't seem to notice though that he's a burger. He's just walking around. He seems to be doing tasks. They're very unusual tasks. Like he's going to a, a, like a box on the wall, you open it and then you flip some switches to fix, I guess, the lights that, that went out. So this, um, that, that's what I see you doing is flipping switches and it has to do with electricity. I keep thinking of the game Among Us and you have these like tasks that have to be accomplished as you're trying to find out who the suspicious Who's, you know, who's suspicious? <laughs> but you're not looking for anyone suspicious. I just see you doing mindless tasks. It has to do with opening a panel, flipping switches, close, walking to another panel. But it's not even that busy. It's actually pretty slow motion. It might be covering maybe five panels in an eight hour day. <laughs> And you're in a dark basement. <laughs> and you're the mega hamburger man. <laughs> I don't know why. This is, I really want to meet you. <laughs> I, I'm going to go down the stairs. I'm going to find you. Oh, you don't want to be found. You don't want anybody to see you. That's why the lights are off. That's why you're checking the switches to make sure the power doesn't come back on. You want to turn it off. This is part of a depression. Because I still see a part of you wants to be as light as your spirit. And I hear the whales calling for you and you ignore them. And you just cry. I still, I, I don't know, I can't stop laughing. I, I need to find you. Make a burger man. I need to find you. I like walking around the base and I'm looking for you. Maybe I'm sus. Maybe I'm suspicious. <laughs> I, I have to find you. <laughs> I'm looking, I'm looking. You're good at hiding, aren't you? You're very good at hiding and you're not small by any means. Oh, you don't even want to know what's down here. Is this your subconscious when it comes to weight? Is this where I'm planting the seeds for you? Because it's a lot more disturbing than we think. Uh, when I finally adjust my eyes to the dark, there's thousands of mindless mega burger men walking around flipping switches and they aren't really there in their heads. They're kind of uh, mindless ghost people, but they're densely overweight. They're densely obtuse and they're, um, moldy, they're um, rotting flesh. There's nothing clean or pretty about any of them. And it's a pretty disturbing place down here, actually. And I can tell that there is a separation between this space of your subconscious and then where your soul I still can't understand it because it is in the, it's more of a consciousness, so it couldn't get lighter than that, right? I mean, it's as light as consciousness. It, but then I hear God is like, consciousness is a lot denser than you think. Look at the world. This is consciousness. This tangible stuff is consciousness. This is all consciousness. There's different dimensions of, of weight when it comes to consciousness. Like, this is heavy consciousness. The whole world is heavy consciousness. Hmm. Then maybe you need to adapt to the heaviness of this dimensional consciousness. But you want it to be lighter than this. You want it to be like like perception of the 3D Earth versus the 5D Earth. Like a, a lighter, harmonious version. And that you would represent that as well. That you would represent like 5D Earth 
you know, in a 3D world or something, like you would represent a lighter consciousness and you want to represent that not only as an idea, but also as a physical representation of it, that you would be a lighter density being. You would actually be a lighter density being. And now this is translating as I want to be 70 kilograms and I'm struggling to um, get my body to get with the program here and just bam, just do this. You need to just do this already. Why am I struggling to lose this weight? And now we're going into subconscious and we're seeing some weird stuff here, okay? And it's interesting. I mean, we're talking about ascension and this parallels to the way that this, these ideas are, are working with each other. And we will get to the whales, by the way. We'll definitely get to the whales. <laughs> I want to know what they have to say. All right. Um... It's very easy for me to get to the Mega Burger Man because there's thousands of them and they're all stuffed in and they can't even move around actually. So it appears they're one body slowly moving and dealing with the panels, but there's actually thousands of them and they're like bumper to bumper, okay? They're like all around each other and they're whispering and talking like they're like mindlessly talking to themselves but i hear they're all doing this so there's a lot of commotion and they're rotting meat they're rotting bodies and it's it's easy for me to be here not easy for me to be with your soul and the lighter density body and the whales hmm i'm having to figure this out can't go back in time i need to mm. i'm gonna leave a part of me down here with the burger people and then i'm gonna have to go up the stairs and out so i'm gonna leave a part of myself here and then i'm going to to try to get to this other section i can't explain why there's a bit of like uh, vulnerability to leaving myself in that burger place but that's important i i don't leave there yet but i also need to explore this and i can't do it without slightly leaving and then slightly staying made it almost impossible to get to this other part of you I mean, it's an impossible maze, making it impossible to be this lighter density. I mean, he's already a lighter density. Like he's, why is he crying? Why isn't he waking up to himself? Maybe that's what the whales are saying. You already are as you want to be. You already are. But you block me out, you're blocking the whales out, you're blocking yourself in, and you're crying over something you already have. You're as light as they come. God says no. You're as heavy as consciousness. Oh, right. You ever think about heavy thoughts that weigh you down? Like stress, fears, weigh you down. And then happy-go-lucky light, lighter thoughts they sort of set you free and you feel a lot lighter. Genuinely, you do. You feel lighter. You feel like you have more energy. You feel like you can conquer the world when you have lighter consciousness. This is a really complex puzzle. I asked God, okay, why don't you give me some ideas? What's the strategy to reach you? I have to be lighter, lighter consciousness. So I take my memory of laughing and wanting to find these mega burger men. And it was like, I don't know, I felt like a kid. I felt like it was hide and go seek. I'm going to find you. I'm looking for you. <laughs> it was so fun. So I'm going to take that energy and I'm going to get through this maze, okay? So I'm taking lighter consciousness into dense consciousness. Oh, man. This this is like a, a hanging out with a negative person who just won't stop being negative. They'll even try to take somebody who's happy and lighthearted and destroy them into dense consciousness. Ugh. I'm moving through um, a maze, by the way, but it's full of um, reasons to lose myself. 
reasons to lose my mind, my light consciousness. It's reasons to become like you had become. So I just keep reminding myself of how fun that was and I just keep going back to the memory as though it, it, I, I am looking at it for the first time again and again and again. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna have to face something in here. A warlock. It's a hairy beast of a man. He literally has a fur, but it's part of his body. His head doesn't have any fur on it at all. It's like a man's face on a mega big, tough, strong man's body with like even fur. Like he's such a man. He has hair in his chest. No, he has fur. It's black. It's like a black cloak that um, soft fur. Um, it goes all over his super muscular, strong body. And he's like 10 feet tall. He's like a mega man. He's not a mega burger man, he's a mega strong man. And I say, are you dense consciousness? Are you heavy consciousness? I mean, you must weigh a lot with all those muscles. Like, you must weigh a lot. So you must be dense consciousness. He calls himself formidable. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes you're formidable <laughs> okay hmm. apparently i'm an inspector now and i'm inspecting what is formidable and i am taking notes and i'm thinking i'm even like tapping pen i'm I'm thinking, I have all these gestures in my ways here as I slowly walk around and analyze the formidable man. I'm still leagues away from where you're crying. I take the sound of you crying and I put it in the mind of the formidable man. That was not, it, it has a negative reaction. I take that back and put it back. It almost blew up his head, just so you know. And so I'm going to take the sounds of the whales, and then I'm going to put that into his head. He starts to make the whale sounds. He just starts, like, he just suddenly adopted um, the ability to speak whale. <laughs> and he just starts making these whale sounds everywhere. And me, the inspector of the formidable man, is like, whoa, what's going on? Something isn't right here. What, what happened to your voice? What happened to your, um, I guess, something sleek about you um, now became something weird because you're making these whale noises. Like, no, 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 this prototype isn't going to work. We must start over again. It's like, get this one, get this, uh, get this away. We need to come back, start from the beginning, start from the beginning. But no, it's, we have to work with what we've got. We don't get to start over. Oh, this is tricky. Oh, wow. Uh, huh. I feel, um, I feel like I'm facing the the worst news that I'd ever could imagine receiving and my throat falls into my heart and my heart has nowhere to go and it just wants to drop forever and I can't swallow I can't breathe I can't think I can't even stand although I'm still standing and we do not accept the whales we do not accept them we don't even try to translate what they're saying. We don't even see this as an extraordinary event where you now adopted the ability to speak whale. We don't see it like that at all. We've decided what, what we want and we want that and that's the formidable man. But if he embarrasses himself by sounding like a big fat whale, then he is a, sh a shame. He is shaming us all. He is shaming us all. And that is this red letter day. That is when my 
throat falls into my heart. My heart drops forever and I can't even move anymore. I, I just appear here and I say, you know what? I went down and I met Mega Burger Man and they're rotting in some place in a basement in a dark place where they keep just dealing with panels, make sure the lights don't come on. And you people are in here analyzing the formidable man who just acquired the ability to speak whale and everybody's disappointed. Wow, this is the worst. And God's like, ah, 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 I'm adopting the heavy consciousness. And I say, no, I'm not. I'm literally, I am literally telling them like it is. It doesn't get lighter than this. Because this behavior, this reaction, is it something unique and different is a disappointment. In and of itself, they are emanating the heavy consciousness. I am emanating the answer. No, apparently I'm becoming a part of the problem. And I start to notice that this crying soul is a bit demonic. That we're trying to reach a demonic being. Which is always the solution, actually. Because once we find the most broken parts of you and we can heal them, then they aren't the most demonic being, right? They're actually an angel. But there's something... Um, hmm... We're all becoming stuck. We're all becoming stuck. Man, I really enjoy... Um, <laughs> I'm really enjoying your subconscious world. It's so fun in here. So we have Mega Burger Man. We have Formidable Man. Who has imperfections. We have the Mysterious Whale. We have... A demonic light, lighter consciousness, supposedly, but it does represent being a light body. We have the conversation of what is like ascension and a heavy earth and then a lighter earth, but it's like in your relationship with yourself, also in your relationship with your soul. I'm listening and I'm just going to follow what I hear, which is, which is a current. Okay. So I'm just, I'm going to follow this current to this being and I'm going to have to let go of so much. I'm going to have to forget everything. Just let it all go. And I'm following the current and I'm actually arriving at a dead beach but the water is still looks clean and pretty but the the sand is like dead i don't know why it's dead sand but it's got like a it doesn't glow it doesn't thrive it seems to be i don't know why but the, the sand is represents dead sand sand that died And you're very, 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 very cold. And you're a boy. And you watch the ocean tide come in, and then you watch it recede and, and then come in again. And you're stuck in time. I have to be really careful how I communicate with you because, okay, I'm going to continue to listen and follow the current inside your ear. I'm going inside of your ear and inside of your head. And I start wanting to throw up, like I kind of start gagging in my throat, but I don't, I, I kind of get it under control and now I'm in the center of your mind. as this frozen boy, maybe eight years old, and he actually has blue skin. He's just a human with blue skin and he represents being frozen. And 
sitting like on dead sand with the ocean tide coming in. And it looks pretty. It's not um, very massive waves or anything. It's a very still ocean for what the ocean usually looks like. It's more like a lake, but it is an ocean. This is a full of problems. I am so sorry. I'm looking at a control panel for your mind and your brain is full of like computers and some of them are sparking and absolutely broken and some psycho came in here with a like a big sledgehammer and busted up some of these the reason why he didn't bust them all up was because he felt guilty after he broke one he basically became stuck and he couldn't destroy any more and then he became stuck with guilt. So for some reason, this is really hurting my right eye. Like it actually is hurting my right eye from the inside out. I feel like somebody's squeezing my right eye and it's really bothering me a lot. It makes my eye feel like it's gonna pop and juice, squirt juice everywhere. And I, I mean, there's so much pressure on my head and on my face on my right side. Again, I have to be very, I have so many reactions that I'm not allowed to have any reaction at all. And I must follow the current into the ear now of this sledgehammer man, okay? He's inside of the head of the frozen boy on the dead sand. And I still see a part of me stuck with the inspector and the formidable man with the whale sounds and all things are stuck there. And the burger men are and I'm still sort of stuck there too, but I, I'm okay. I can move about if I, if I really need to. I can find ways to be animated there. At that place is starting to smell really bad. Really, really bad. Okay. So I'm inside of now the head of the sledgehammer man. He has a very small brain, actually. He only has one panel. And it's turned off. But there's a lot of creepy, crawly things. There's a lot of eyeballs watching me. I'm turning this system on. And these things are freaking out about this. They don't want me to turn the system on. And there's a weird um, kind of Medusa-like figure here. She has a really like pea green, almost glowing neon pea green face. Snakes for hair. Her face is quite flat. It surprised me how, f how flat it is, but it, it is a, a female face. And it is human looking. And she wears a pretty cool looking dress. It's made out of many layers of snake skins and it's tightly fitted and it kind of um, it goes around her body and it's um, I, I, it's really cool looking. It's many layers of snake skins all sewn together and it's not necessary. It's kind of patchy in ways. I just say I like your dress. She has a sledgehammer too. And she says, anybody who touches this system, um, I have this sledgehammer. I say, well, what about the, the snakes? Like, what about, don't you want to put your snakes, like, don't you want to use your snake hair on me or something? Like, that'd be kind of cool. Why do you have to have a sledgehammer? I don't know why this conversation is pausing her out. So I take the sledgehammer, which, believe it or not, it, it's covered in um, rust. And the wooden um, part that hold that metal on is um, very brittle. And it feels like this is uh, falling apart. I just take it out of her hands and it does have some splintering, like it could leave splinters. I just make it disappear. I say you don't need that. Look at, look at you, look at your awesome, look at how awesome you are. You're so interesting. 
I want to know more about you. She kind of is a ego, has a relationship with ego. Because the more I compliment her, the more she's like, oh, oh, hmm, yeah. <laughs> And as I compliment her, the snakes are starting to die, actually. And her hair, her head is bald now, because they just died and fell off. And she, her face is being reformed, her whole body is being reformed. And uh, the dress is disappearing, and she's just a beautiful naked woman, actually. And her eyes are starting to glow with light on the inside, and she says, "What? why did I imprison myself in here for so long? And she says there's no need to focus on this system or rebooting it. She says, um, let's follow the current out and go to the center of the mind of the frozen boy. And I, I see once we do that, she stands here and she's a little bit questionable, just so you know. Vibrationally, she, she represents somebody that... might not want to trust however we'll just see because i sledgehammer man just turns into a big pile of ash and it just disappears and that feels corrected and even corrects that panel that was broken but this whole system needs rewired like it needs work big time and i start to see those mega burger men uh, actually have an important role and their relationship with the electricity and the panels is important I see though, when I look into her eyes, this beautiful naked woman, I see that she, sometimes she, she makes decisions that she knows are going to create harm uh, because maybe she gets bored. I, it's almost like she knows how to make decisions that are going to help everything thrive, but if everything's thriving all the time, it's like, it's fun to, I guess, create drama every now and then. That's what she's kind of like. She knows all about those burger people. She knows all about the formidable men. She knows about everything. So I feel like she represents ego as well. But she's not somebody we want to get rid of. She's actually somebody that we want to work with and we want to better our relationship with her. And she needs to better her relationship with herself and the importance of who she is and how this all functions and how this all brings joy because I'm showing her that you know were you really happy being trapped in that man I mean you lost yourself in there is it you you are wanting to lose yourself in all this you want to create a challenge because you're bored and then you lose yourself in the challenge is that what you wanted she's starting to get a bit claustrophobic she's getting um, a bit of anxiety she doesn't like being in this frozen boy's head she wants to get out and I say no no you're going to learn your lesson here you're gonna learn it all the way through she's starting to become really demonic like she's becoming like an ice witch she's got vampire teeth she's trying to kill me kind of thing I just just freeze her so she can't move at all. It's like, okay, if you want to be an ice witch, then I'm just going to make it so you can't even move. You're just going to be just a frozen, stiff, still person. Just like this boy. She just has like a final scream. And somehow that scream reaches the head of the formidable man. And he starts to scream instead of make whale sounds. That it gets stuck. The scream also gets stuck. And I see the frozen boy is blinking his eyes. <sighs> and he's looking at the ocean finally. He was always sitting facing the ocean, but he was never really able to see it because he was sort of lost in his mind. I look at God and I say, my gosh, we have, we have a lot. <laughs> we have a lot of cleanup here. I, <laughs> I just, I mean... So God inspires the frozen boy to walk to the ocean. I'm still inside his head. And God says that's fine. 
And when we walk into the ocean, we keep walking for a very long way in the ocean. And it gets deeper and deeper. Like we weigh a lot and we just walk into the depths of like an abyss in the ocean. And there's, there's so much light down here. I didn't expect it to be so full of colors. There's so many pretty colors down here. It's like all lit up with, with uh, so many pretty colors in the dark. I, it's so beautiful here. Oh, it makes me feel emotional. There's far more than whales here. Because there aren't really whales here, but the sounds of their music reaches these deep places and it helps things grow down here. And it helps them learn about light. And I see that you trapped an old part of yourself down here in an old, like, kind of treasure chest. It's pretty cool, like an old pirate's chest. It's like opening it up and there you are. But you were sleeping. You wanted just a nice quiet place to rest where nobody would bother you. But you were sleeping for a long time. And this is a brother self. Kind of guided by God to find you. You're actually meant to take his place. And God is resurrecting that frozen boy to heaven now. And I am just with the mega burger men now. All the ocean water goes down a drain and everything about this place is rebuilding itself. But the you that woke up is like connected to every part of you again. You're, you were like a wire that um, disconnected from another wire. Like you, you are fixing the electrical system in a subconscious space. And all the burger men disappear into one. And they start to hold the reflection of the you that came out of the treasure chest. And you're linking your minds together. And you're waking up in the, in the eyes of the formidable man who just starts to appear as the same person in all these places. And there's like a release of the mace. The inspector is no longer needed because there's nothing to inspect here, so it just disappears. And I start to see a linking from three separate environments in your subconscious are linking and syncing up with one another and you're glowing with light in every space. I don't know how to explain what any of them look like anymore because they don't exist anymore. You just exist as a being of intelligence and light and consciousness. And the weight doesn't matter because it doesn't matter. In this space, you represent being whole and you represent being full of light and consciousness and self-awareness. And that whole thing is just completely cleaned up. You're walking up a, a golden staircase now and we do feel like we're in a contained space, but you're walking towards a door. You're wanting to expand your senses expand your mind believe it or not you want to expand your body and somehow it's translating it into expand with weight when really it's expand with i guess joy and intrigue in life and so we're correcting that that program um, so it makes more sense that you're wanting to expand with with joy in life That's the best way that I could define it. Your head feels full of light and your crown chakra is, is far more open and more flow of energy. I see this part of your subconscious in this deep place is actually going to God now. And is walking into what can only be described as source. Source as like a flow of, el of electricity and intelligence like a computer, an all, an all computer, that you're walking in and you're kind of absorbing into the all computer um, so that you can receive like a new, a new sense of self, a new, a new program, a new, 
a printout. I mean, it, it, that, 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 it's like printing an old printer that's slowly printing information, but it's happening inside of you. And it feels really, 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 really good. It feels like amazing. <laughs> I didn't expect it to feel so good. It's like none of that stuff matters anymore. We did it. We're just getting the printout inside with the old school printer inside with the all mind. <laughs> I, I can't tell you, it tickles. When the printer does its thing, it's like it's putting new coding in there and it's like it tickles so much. It's like meant to create laughter and silliness and lightheartedness and a lighter consciousness. It's meant to be like this. And it's wonderful. It's making you happy. It's making you feel funny and joyful. And that's what it's all about. <laughs> and let all that weight go. It's just like a weird balloon that you're dragging along and it just, it literally, it's attached to your back and we just cut the line and just wherever that goes, it goes. That's another scene. As you're just smiling and getting this like cool printout inside the all mind. It's like a golden living space and it's so full of fun and excitement and adventure and new ideas and new ways of discovering yourself and being joyful in your life. That's cool. This is so cool. Thank you. Just let that energy settle. Just let all that settle. There's no doubt your subconscious. It's, isn't it such an interesting place? Like what else is going on in there? You know what I mean? Just transforming what we transform is going to make you feel like a new person. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Hope you found it just as meaningful. All right. Have an amazing day, everybody.